Hello, my name is Andrew Vibes and you're watching Factory 78. Um, my name is Andrew Vibes. Um, I'm a music producer. Um, currently, I'm in London for some work, just making music with like um, amazing talents, um, songwriters and producers, basically just collaborating. And oh, it feels, it feels, it feels amazing to be a part of like um, the Maven team as a producer. Um, for me, it was like a full circle moment. Um, um, being that, you know, Don Jazzy was like one of the guys, like my major um, influence on my career as a producer and just being a part of like what he has, you know, created is, is amazing and just, um, yeah, feels good. I would say um, the, it, it would be my background, my background in music. Um, born to a family of um, a musician um, just growing up in that you know I kind of like just took that in and um, by the time you know I was a teenager um, I started to you know explore writing songs writing raps and then you know and then I went on to start um, producing so you know yeah basically it's just that you know my background basically yeah, growing up with my dad was 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 cool, was amazing. Um, I learned a lot from him. Um, I learned how to just take things one step at a time, and um, also just the creativity itself. Creativity that I have, like, came from him. I'm not gonna deny that. Um, I I also like had experience to just spend time with him in the studio, watch him, you know, cut records, mm. watch him um, rehearse, you know, make music with the band, how he controls the band, and then watch him on stage. Also just observed how he, like, personally just dealt with things and people, you know, uh, and the stardom and the fame and all of that. So it was interesting. But at the same time, he was also a father, like, you know, back at home, he was my dad, you know, I, I didn't see him more than that. So um, I only started to realize that when I, as I got older, that you know, this man was he's like, a he's a legend, he's great, yeah. But at home, he was a father to us, yeah. Are you first son, last son, or uh, a child? I'm, I'm a child, I'm just, oh, I'm yeah. in there, yeah. <laughs> I joined the band at the age of 16. Okay. Yeah, and I played for five years. I played, I played for five years. So this was like um, between 2004, 2005 to like 2010. Um, yes, we've, we've, had, we've, had, um, we've had conversations a few times about like uh, music and... So I, what I can remember is him telling me, you know, how music was back in the days, back in his time in the 60s, 70s and 80s and you know how it, it evolved and then um, we've also like had back and forth and arguments on, you know, <laughs> yeah. So obviously like I was doing my own thing at the time and then he also was just trying to, I, I know he, he was trying to put me in the right path and make me like, just not to like make any big mistake. Right. So, um, we had differences on some things, but I mean, it was just, it's for the culture basically. So, um, yeah, no, no. So. I mean, I, about that, especially in Ghana, you know, yeah, so right? I, I mean, I, I lost my dad like 2021 and, oh, you know, the whole Afro, Afrobeats conversation and movement just kind of like started like 2019, 2020. So, oh. um, yeah, we never really got that chance to like talk about, about that. But I know he was, um, my dad was, I don't think he was um there was no genre that he was like he just boxed into he could literally do everything mm -hmm. and he didn't like to be boxed into a high life oh. musician yeah even though that was like the song that brought him to like limelight but like he did you know a totally different sound okay. from high life and the vibe sound is very versatile it's just like um, i'm very experimental um with my sound i like to try new things i like to i like to make stuff that people would not expect i won't say they've not heard mm. but the way I, I put the sounds together will make it sound like you've never heard it but if you listen closely you would hear like elements from stuff that you're familiar with yeah i think that's the andrew vibe sound
I've, I've always taken it as a job since when I started. Um, but I think when it probably took like four years from when I started producing for me to start seeing that, oh, this, it was really serious because I started to have like, you know, more like um, serious artists come to work with me. Because when I started, I was working with like friends that I know mm -hmm. that were just trying to like, you know, um, get into music or we're just having fun with it at the time. Yeah. I, was in, I was based in Benin in at the time. Yes, I was based in Benin and I was working with like a lot of underground artists. Mm -hmm. um, Anyone that have learned so far from... <laughs> um, I mean, the the person that blew from the South South was Young Six. Yes. Oh, Eriga. Eriga from that. Eric, I, I never worked with Eriga, but like, from yes, from yes, yes. I never worked, but we, we always talk, we talk, but we've never just gotten time to like, you know, so create something. So what are you going to produce for Young Six and uh, Blue Mom? Is that, yeah, is that Blue um, This song is called Heartbreak Swag. Yeah, it's on his first album. Yeah. Have great ears for music, like, and and just, you know, be free, be free with how you create. Like, there's no one way to like make this thing. If you can make anything, and you know, as long as it's, it connects to like the audience, to the listeners, it's cool. You know, just don't be afraid to try anything. I I think that's that's it for me, because um, I won't tell you to make music a certain way because that might not be your style. Mm. So just make it, if you feel like you have the talent, you have something, you, you have the gift for music, just go and, and do it. Make, I'm, a, I'm a producer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get in the studio, I arrange, I, you know, compose. Make it's, beat too, right? Yeah, I make beats. Oh, yeah. So it's part of it. I mean, you know, from where we're from, like we, we make beats and all of that, but like I understand how music should be made. So like I consider myself, I'm a producer, you know, um, before I make beats, I can, you know, me and the artist can come together and I say, oh, we want to make something like this. And then we figure out how to do it, you know, and if we need to get external um, people like, you know, instrumentalists or whatever, we'll, we'll get them, you Guitar, know. Yes, yes, yeah. It's always been this. Like yes, music, mm -hmm. wow. music, arts, you know, um, yeah, everything in the... Art that you draw as well? Yes, I'm a fine artist. I, I saw I draw and I sculpt. I, I also like when I went to university, that's what I studied and I majored in sculpture okay. here in university. I would say the first song that established, you know, my credibility in the industry would be Feeling by Ladi Po and oh, wow. Buju. Yes, that's, that's the song. That song actually changed a lot for me. Yeah, and just put me on that part, like greatness. Well, just... No, it's basically just produce. I made the beats, okay. yeah, and then. So what I did was, he would, especially for like Poe, he would put down his rap and whatever, and we'll just brainstorm. And mm. if I feel like he was good enough, would we'll, I'll give you like the thumbs up. If I felt like he still had like some more work to do, I'll let him know, and then he will go back to the drawing board. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, when I get into the studio with like a lot, some artists, um, for some, I don't have to stress myself with like um, suggesting what they have to do because uh, I trust them and I just let them do whatever they want to do, you know, just jump on a beat. For some, um, when we start to record, when I feel like it's not going in the direction that I want it to go, then I come in and suggest or Maybe I can give some ideas or drop some top lines and whatever. So it varies with um, the personality, the, the, the artist for me. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you if I feel like, I'll, I'll tell you, I feel like this is not strong enough. Maybe you can try and adjust something here and there. I know, yeah, some, some people are um, stubborn. So you have to be diplomatic with the way you um, approach these things and you know how you suggest mm -hmm. so uh, for me what really helps me is that um most of the time before i i start working with artists i like to get in a space where i can connect with them you know as just you know normal guys and get to understand them so we're not like feeling like we're strangers i like to i don't like to rush work i don't like when you just come and the first thing we're doing is work i like to get to know you a bit so i mean i think i think i have the gift to know somebody is going to be difficult before i even get to work with a person so if if i sense that i i just i will back out 
I usually back out. I, I, I've never really had any conflicts with anybody, with any artist here. Yeah, I've never really had that. Yeah. Naturally, I'm a cool guy. So <laughs> when, when, you, when you're around me, you will know that I'm cool. So if, if you want to misbehave or you just, there's where I'm cool, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not someone that you, you should also like just, you know, mess with. Uh, there are a lot of songs. So there are a lot of songs. Let me, let me see. Is there anything of recent? Um, okay, so I can only remember older songs. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely would have loved to be the one to produce Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. Okay. Yes, wow. yes, and then, um, also I I loved um, this um, "Blow My Mind" by David Doe and Chris Brown. Yeah. And then um, samba, beat of life. Oh, to be honest, um, sometimes it feels unbelievable because you just these things just come and you don't expect them. Like you just, I just wake up and somebody will tell me, "Oh, you're on this list now. Go check it out." And I check it out, and it feels like a dream. But then I also, when I peep it, I'm like, "Yo, I've I've worked for this. I've been doing this for like a long time. So anything I'm getting, I deserve it because I put in that work." And um, so I take, anytime anything happens, I just take it and, you know, nobody. Okay, you just, yeah. these beats for Rema, yeah. come through, let's record. Yeah, we don't, have, we don't have to go through all of that. Like, the only time that would happen is if I feel like, if I have a beat and I don't, I don't know who would be the perfect fit, fit I might speak to somebody that I, I trust, maybe someone like Tega. You know, I can send him as what like, does he do? like he's the COO like okay. of, of Maven and yeah, he has ears for like this thing. So I can just send it to him like, ah, boss, like listen to this stuff. And sometimes you just tell me, oh, yo, ah, this person will go good on top of this thing. So yeah, I trust that. But like, yeah, we have um, the creative liberty and license to just make music. What's important is we're making the music, just producing it. Yeah, I oh, produce um, some songs. Put yeah. up a little bit. Listen, how many songs you produce? Um, I have three songs on this album. Okay. I have three songs. Yeah, that's um, Calm Down, Dirty, and Mara. Oh, okay. Yes. Can, can you remove, let them see the, the green vinyl so we're not lying? It's not just only plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just... Okay, sure. Look at it, fresh. Fresh. Green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I knew Rema from way back when he was pretty young. He was like, oh. he was a teenager. In Benin. He must have the one that introduced you to the No, he wasn't. Song. No, he was wasn't. He that him to no. Him to that that was it was just you know, fates. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like he's already signed to Mavis. He was signed and, and then you should just showed up? I showed up. God also like just brought me there too. Wow. So do you remember the first project you ever uh, recalled with Rama, like back in Yeah, yeah. What was that? In Benin, it was yeah. Um, yeah this, is, this is a song called Mercy. Mercy. Right? Yes, yeah, even online, it's, it's on YouTube. I think the attention span of people are, is pretty short now. Um, now we are the age where, by the time where you know we have like internet, social media, and um, streaming platforms, where you have over sixty million songs, mm, mm. and you have access to re to it. it. It's not. We've gone past the time where you had to wait for an artist to drop like an album and a physical album. Mm -hmm. And how many albums would you buy? Would you go out and buy mm -hmm. in the market, right? So you enjoyed listening to that. You could listen to that continuously for the next two, three years. But now it's not like that. Mm -hmm. Content are always coming out every day. You're on Instagram and you see somebody you're following has dropped something and then you have to go listen. So the attention span is so short mm -hmm. that if anything exceeds a certain you know time yeah people will lose interest in it it looks bright it looks pretty bright and like we're, we're just scratching the surface right now we're, we're going to even do more amazing things like even the records that we have broken i have broken right now we're going to break even more other people it might be from me people that i know of from like new people new cards coming and you know i would i, I want to see that all my life <laughs> I dedicate all my life to it. Like even when I'm not working, I'm still thinking of work. I'm still thinking of the next thing to do. And naturally, as a creative, your mind is always wandering. It's always like looking for like that new 
sparked a new source. So I'm always working. The people who inspired me, I can do people who inspired me. Um, we have Timbaland, I have um, Pharrell, I have Kanye West, um, I have um, Don Jazzy, OJB Jizreel, Dr. Frabs, um, Idi Kabasa, um, I have Dark Child, um, Scott Storch, um, um, Teddy Riley. Okay, you got some. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, um, um, was, was Quincy Jones. I have to put Quincy Jones in there. Yeah, yeah, I have to. So what project are you working on now? Uh, we're just working on, on stuff right now. Um, there's a producer project in the works. Okay. Yeah, in Maven. So that's there. And also, I've just been working with like a lot of artists, even outside Maven. International okay. and back at home. Um, I can't say America, for now. Okay. Both. Both okay. yeah. um, I mean, it feels very amazing. What, I was the what was the song? I think the first one would be Omalese Ye Ye Ye. Okay. Yes, that would be the first song that I know that hit one million and it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, we've done like over a million streams. Okay. Yeah, but, um, but feeling was also still that song that, you know, I really tracked a lot. Like I was like, yo, we hit one million and the next thing two million and like we just kept going and then oh, yeah. we're topping charts. Yeah, Calm Down is <laughs> insane because Calm Down was like, in six months, we had hit 100 million, and that was like the fastest ever, like you know, song to hit 100 million on on YouTube, yeah. and then even on Spotify too. So yeah, it just is mind blowing, and the, the ripple effect is that the more numbers you make, the more money you make. So what do you think about your vibes, man? What do you think about the sound? Oh, I I think I think it's pretty interesting. Um, I know a lot of people still, I mean, online, no, because there's, there's plenty of banter online and people still, um, we don't understand what this guy is singing. But I think I pretty understand it. I'm not a Yoruba person, but I get what he's doing. Like you, I, because um, when I was also growing up, I schooled in, in Lagos. So I was familiar with like the sound, like on the street, like you see Okada men driving and you hear the music they play from it. So I feel like there's, there's elements of that in what he's doing and and it's new it's fresh mm -hmm. so um i don't think he should stop he should continue oh i love ashake ashake sound these are guys that are doing different things and that's what the industry needs right. what i want to be remembered for yeah. uh i still want to be remembered for creating the greatest one of the greatest afrobeat song you know breaking you know being one of those guys to you know do that make that crossover and break a lot of barriers and then um, bring the the world closer with music. Yeah, yeah it's in the world. works too. It's in the works. What's like, the name going? What's it going to be? I, I you don't. Work with the company or? Oh, definitely, or definitely. I'll work it's with the company. Work. Yeah, there are a lot of options. So I'll work with the company. I don't have a name for it yet, but I'm sure it will be something around you know my name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Andrew Vibes, I can people reach out to your social media and all that. Um, my social media on Instagram, it's Andre Vibes, that's A-N-D-R-E-V-I-B-E-Z. Um, on Twitter, it's Andre Vibes underscore. Um, you can catch me on um, Treads right now. <laughs> At, it's Andre Vibes too. Yeah, just... Okay, any personal project you're working on your own project? Um, not in personal for now, but okay. but yeah, when when I have that, like, we'll, yeah, we'll see that. Thank you, Andre Vibes.